Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course, where you will learn how to assign diaphragms in RAM frame. Let's first start by switching our attention to the sample model we'll be using for this series. Over the next series of videos, we are going to be showing you how to assign a rigid diaphragm, a semi-rigid diaphragm, and a pseudo-flexible diaphragm in RAM frame. Through that process, we will discuss some of the characteristics that will be important to understand for those different types of diaphragms, and we'll be able to review the results, including the deflections of the diaphragms and the loads that are transmitted to the vertical lateral force resisting system. In this video, we are going to be focusing on assigning a rigid diaphragm to both levels of this two-story structure. Now, before we go ahead and assign that diaphragm type, let's first take a closer look at the sample structure. And just for a moment, I'm going to hide my decks in this 3D view. What you're going to notice is that if I take a look at how lateral loads are going to be applied in the global Y direction for this model, we're going to see that we have along grid line one, a very rigid and stiff concrete shear wall. And along grid line five, we have a fairly flexible moment frame. This is significantly going to affect how loads are going to be transferred, especially when we're taking a look at a rigid diaphragm approach. Now in the opposite direction, the model's pretty symmetrical with brace frames along grid line A and grid line D. Let's also go ahead and take a look back at the diaphragms as they appear on our screen. And we're gonna notice that a composite slab has been assigned to this level and the diaphragm is a one-way slab. In a rigid diaphragm analysis, the stiffness of the diaphragm is significantly greater than the supporting vertical lateral load resisting system. If we were to take a look at the lateral load distribution, we would see that the lateral loads will be distributed through the diaphragm based on the relative stiffness of each frame. As far as the deflection goes, all of the vertical members connected to the diaphragm will deflect the same amount when a lateral load is applied to the diaphragm. As we return to our sample model, we're gonna start by entering RAM frame and take a look at the diaphragm assignment. To access RAM frame, we're gonna to go to the design toolbar at the left-hand side of the RAM manager and click on the frame design icon. Now, once we're in RAM frame, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna assign our diaphragm as a rigid diaphragm. To do that, we're gonna go up to the criteria menu bar item and then select diaphragm. Now for each diaphragm in your model, you're allowed to select any of the different diaphragm types we have available. You can select them on an individual basis by using the pull down menu here, or you can use the buttons for all rigid, for example. Now each level of the structure can be assigned its own diaphragm and you are allowed to have multiple different diaphragms on the same level as long as they're enclosed in a slab perimeter. Now as I specify the diaphragm options, there are a couple of other options I can take a look at. First I can take a look at out of plane stiffness for bending and for rigid diaphragms with a two-way dex for lateral load case, I can include the out of plane stiffness. Now for my model, I only contain a one-way slab, so I'm gonna leave this option unselected as it doesn't really affect my model anyway. In addition to that, I can have some options for gravity members supporting two-way dex. Again, this is not applicable to my particular model. Now, once we're done with our diaphragm assignments, let's go ahead and click OK. Now, in a rigid diaphragm, masses will be concentrated at the center of mass of the diaphragm, and they are resisted through the center of rigidity. Now, the center of rigidity is defined as a point at which the lateral load applied at its location produces no rotation at that particular level. Now, automatically through the analysis, RAM frame will be able to calculate your center of rigidity. But if you wish to view that center of rigidity on your plan, you're going to want to set up your model to do so. The way we can tell the program to display our center of rigidity after an analysis is to create a center of rigidity load case. This happens by selecting the loads menu bar option and then going to load cases. And here you can see our center of rigidity option. 
So here I'm going to create a label. I'm just going to call mine COR for center of rigidity. Select the center of rigidity type and then click the add button. Now this will allow me to be able to display the center of rigidity after an analysis is performed. In addition to that, while we're still in our load cases dialog, let's take a look at what our model already contains. Obviously the dead load and the live load have been brought over from the loading information that we specified in the RAM modeler. In addition to that, we've also set up some wind load cases that were calculated according to the ASCE 710 main wind force resisting system. And we also added some seismic loads for the ASCE 710 equivalent ladder force procedure. I have two separate types of seismic load cases set up, some with eccentricity and some without. That way you can see the difference of where the loads will be applied depending upon your situation. Now once we are done specifying all of our load cases, including our center rigidity load case, we'll go ahead and click OK. Now before we analyze the model, let's go ahead and also take a look at one last option, which is how are nodes connected to the diaphragm. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go to the assign menu bar item. We're going to find the nodes and then we'll find our diaphragm connection. So let's go ahead and click on that. And you can see here that we have the global criteria set. And if you want to override the global criteria, you can say whether or not a node is connected to the diaphragm or disconnected to the diaphragm. Let me just click on the single button for now so that way we can see what the global criteria is set at anyway or what each of these nodes are set up for our particular model. Now anywhere you see a yellow dot, basically what that means is that node is connected to the diaphragm and a white dot would mean that that node is not connected to the diaphragm. Now automatically the tops of all lateral columns and shear wall corners or ends will be attached to rigid diaphragms if they are within the slab boundary. They will be disconnected from the diaphragm if they are outside of the slab boundary or if they are within a slab opening or slab penetration. Now optionally you can attach internal nodes on lateral beams and those are basically nodes that are created when a lateral brace intersects a lateral beam. So right now, let's go ahead and just right click and we can see that the global criteria is set for all of them. And just to verify this, we'll go ahead and click all. And what we can see is that right now our global criteria is set to have my internal nodes of beams disconnected from the diaphragm. Now, where do we see where that global criteria is? That's again back in your diaphragms dialog. So if we went to our criteria dialog and select a diaphragm, and here we have another additional option to disconnect. And here is where that option is. So my global criteria is set to disconnect internal nodes of beams. And you can change this if you need to for your particular model. I'm going to go ahead and keep cancel. And I'm going to keep that global criteria as I have it currently set. Now at this point, since I've taken a look at how my nodes are connected to the diaphragm and I've specified my diaphragm as rigid, I'm now ready to go ahead and perform the analysis. In my menu bar, I'm now going to select process and then finish this up by clicking analyze. And I'm going to select all of my load cases. Now just as a reminder, in a rigid diaphragm approach, we've told the program that we are performing the analysis with a rigid diaphragm. It is your responsibility as the engineer to make sure that a rigid diaphragm is appropriate for whatever slab type you have assigned if you're going to go ahead and assign it as a rigid diaphragm. So you're going to want to make sure if you have a non-composite or a composite deck that you check with your deck manufacturer, um, take a look at your fastening pattern and the deflection of your structure to see if it's within the code prescribed requirements for a rigid diaphragm approach. Now after the analysis is performed, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a variety of results that might be of interest to us. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the loads that were calculated for our diaphragm. And to take a look at that, we can go to our loads and applied forces report. So in the reports menu bar option, we're going to select reports and then we'll go to loads and applied forces. Now this report will list the story and diaphragm force load cases and the defined criteria. So we can take a look at each load case that was defined. Uh, there are input parameters and the calculations including your story forces. 
One of the things that we're going to take a look at is how the structure is classified based on its natural frequency calculation. Now, the diaphragm type will affect how loads are distributed throughout the structure, but it also affects the calculation of the code loads themselves. <clears throat> For our sample structure, the natural frequency is greater than 1 hertz in both of the horizontal directions, which classifies the structure as a rigid structure according to the ASCE 7, section 6.2. Now, since the structure is, wizard, is rigid, the main reinforced resisting system forces are calculated accordingly. Now, had I assigned a different diaphragm classification for this diaphragm, that may have affected the natural frequency, which again can affect the overall calculation for your story forces. So as we click through this report, we can review all of our diaphragm forces. For, there's our wind load, and then we'll get into seismic. Now, after reviewing your applied story forces, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the results on screen. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my center of mass and my center of rigidity, which will give me an idea about how forces are going to be laid out in this structure. So after a calculation is performed, you can review your center of mass by clicking on the center of mass icon within your results toolbar. Those will be appearing in red. And you can also turn on your center of rigidity, which is right adjacent to that, which will be appearing in blue. Now, as we can see, the center of mass is, is fairly close to the geometric center of each level. And our center of rigidity is really centered over that very rigid concrete shear wall over at the left-hand side of my structure. Now, in addition to that, I'm also going to take a look at my applied story forces. Now, lateral forces will be applied as a single load on rigid diaphragms. The rigid diaphragm will then distribute the forces to the vertical lateral force resisting system. So to view your applied story forces on screen, we can select the applied story forces icon within the results toolbar. And from here, we can choose to display any piece of information that we want. Let's first select one of our wind load cases in the Y direction. And this particular load case doesn't have any eccentricity associated with it. We're going to select our load case of interest and click on the display option. And then we'll go ahead and click apply. And let me just go ahead and move this off to the side. Now, what we're going to say is, see is that when you have no eccentricity with your wind load case, it means that the wind load will be applied at the geometric center of the diaphragm, which is basically determined from the building extents from slab edge to slab edge. Now, if I wanted to take a different approach, let's go ahead and take a look at it with positive eccentricity. What I'm going to see is that the load will be applied at a distance of 15% of the overall building dimension from the geometric center of the diaphragm. If I scroll down, let's take a look at your seismic load in your Y direction. And what we're going to see is that when no eccentricity is applied, then the seismic load will be applied at the center of mass of the diaphragm. And if we were add in the effects of eccentricity, then we're going to see that the seismic load will be applied at a distance of 5% of the overall building dimension from the center of mass of the diaphragm. Now, for each rigid diaphragm, RAM frame calculates the diaphragm mass, the center of mass, the mass moment of inertia, and the percent eccentricity that will be used to determine the location of the seismic loads or how the seismic loads will be applied to the diaphragm. The building extents are calculated based on the overall building dimension, and that is calculated from basically your slab edge to slab edge in each direction. The next piece of information we can review are frame forces, which will basically display the shears for any analyzed load case with arrows at corresponding frame geometric centers. To review this information on your screen, we're going to go ahead and select the frame story shears icon, and then we can select any load case we want. We'll go ahead and select our first wind load case in the Y direction. We'll go ahead and display it, and then we'll go ahead and click OK. So we can basically see how the forces will be distributed through the diaphragm. Now we're going to notice that a majority of the load will be transferred through the diaphragm to the concrete shear wall 
when load is applied in the Y direction, which is significantly stiffer than the steel moment frame that's on the other side of the structure. We're also going to notice that since this is a rigid diaphragm, that it is a possibility that moments will be induced on the structure based on how the loads are resisted and where they are applied. So if you have a slight moment arm in that calculation, you may get a little additional moments in the frames on the opposite sides of your structures as we here, see here. Now the last piece of information we're going to go ahead and take a look at is our nodal displacements. So we're going to come back to our reports menu and we're going to select nodal displacements. Now within this report what we're going to see is that the linear and rotational displacements in the X, Y, and Z global axis directions for each load case at each lo node number have been indicated. Now, as we scroll down and review this report, we're gonna notice that all of the nodes at each level for each load case are displacing the same amount, which is consistent with a rigid diaphragm analysis. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and close out of this report. And this concludes our process for assigning a rigid diaphragm to the model and reviewing the results to ensure that it's consistent with our approach. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.